Okay, here we go. Um, this is a new way I have figured out to uh, have you guys do factoring. Since I did my original videos, it's a million times easier. So I recommend you do it this way. And it hopefully makes sense to you. Um, let's have a first look here. We're going to do some expanding before we get into the factoring. Um, just to make sure everybody knows how to use these charts. This is quite simple. simple similar to um, some uh, charts you might have used in science or other math. Um, we, in this case, we've got x plus 3 times x minus 5. So we'll go x here, 3 there, x there, negative 5 there. And then we've just got x times x is x squared. x times 3 is 3x. x times negative 5 is negative 5x. And negative 5 times 3 is negative 15. Which means that when we collect like terms, we're going to end up with x squared. We've got 3x and negative 5x is going to be negative 2x minus 15. Okay, and let's just do one more of those to make sure you guys know how to use these charts. Here we've got 2x and negative 1, 5x and 3. Notice it doesn't matter if I were to put the 2x and the negative 1 up here. Instead, um, you're going to get the same answer. Okay, so in this case we've got 2 times 5, or 2x times 5x is 10x squared. 2x times 3 is 6x. 5x times negative 1, negative 5x. And negative 1 times 3, negative 3. And again, collecting like terms, it'll give me 10x squared plus x minus 3. Okay, so now that we know how the charts work, let's have a look at some factoring using the charts. So notice we can kind of play around with these and work backwards. So I recommend usually starting with the numbers here. So on this one, if I've got 2x and 6, the common factor between those would be 2. And if that's a 2, then that must be a 3, 3 times 6. And just to double check, yeah, that 3 is going to work with that 3. And if this is going to be 3x, then that must be an x. And if that's going to be 2x, then that must be an x. So basically, we've done the same thing in reverse as we did up top. So we know that this thing is the same as x plus 3 times x plus 2. OK, and let's do the same thing over here for b. We know the x squared things are always going to go in the top left corner. And we know the numbers are always in the bottom right corner. And the ones with just x are going to be on the diagonal. OK, and again, let's start with the numbers, because that's the easiest. The first thing I see here is that this must be a 5 here, because that's a common factor between 15x and 5. If this is a 5, then that must be a 1, because 1 times 5 equals 5. And 1 times something must equal 2x, so that must be 2x. And 5 times something must be 15x, so that must be 3x. Quick double check, 2x times 3x is 6x squared. Yeah, that works. So that means that this thing is the same as 2x plus 5 times 3x plus 1. OK, so now the trick is, anytime I give you a question, I'm never going to give you it looking like this. It's always going to be 6x squared plus 17x plus 5. So you need to figure out how to break that 17x into 15x and 2x so that this will actually work. OK, so let's have a quick look here. <clears throat> Take all of the values from the four gray boxes in 2a and multiply them together. So these are the outside boxes here. So I'd have 3 times x times x times 2. That's going to be 6x squared. OK, now take the diagonals. So basically, I'm going to take that diagonal and multiply them together. 3x times 2x is going to be 6x squared. And the other diagonal, x squared times 6, is also going to be 6x squared. So 
What did you notice? Obviously, they're all 6x squared. Why does it happen? Okay, let's have a look over at B here to think about why it happens. So this diagonal here, this 6x squared, I got that from going this times this. And that 5, I got from going 1 times 5. So really, when I've got this diagonal, I've actually multiplied all four of these outside things together just in a different order. I've gone 2x times 3x times 1 times 5 gives me all four multiplied together. And same with the other two diagonals. So actually, let's go. Let's just go up here just to talk about the other two diagonals. So we're going to be talking about this diagonal, which is going to be that times that, and this diagonal, which is going to be that times that. And again, notice we've basically, if we multiply this and this together, we've multiplied all four of the outside things together as well, just in a different order. So that tells us that our diagonals are always going to have the same product. So let's use that information on the next page. OK, so the first thing we're going to want to do, we know the x squared and the number are always going to go there and there. So we've already got that done. And because we know those go there and there, we know the diagonal product is going to be 10x squared. So we're going to write that over here under product. And now we know that the product of these two has to be 10x squared. Well, how can that happen? I could have 1x times 10x. I could have 2x times 5x. And that's basically it. Those are the only two ways I can do it. Because the next one would be 5x times 2x, which is the same thing. So it's got to be one of these two. So how can we decide which one it is? Well, now we need to look over here. We know that these two boxes also need to add up to 7x, which tells us that this one obviously adds up to 11x if we were to add those two together, but this one adds up to 7x. So we should use this one. So I'm going to put 2x there, 5x there. Notice it doesn't matter which order you put those in. I could have put the 2x up top. And now we just have to do that quick little puzzle. Well, let's look at the numbers first, because that's easiest. This must be a 2. And if that's a 2, that must be a 5. And that means that must be an x. And x times x is x squared, so that must be x. So that means I've got x plus 2 times x plus 5. All right, um, instead of walk, I guess we'll walk through one more. And then after that, I'm just going to do them, let you pause the video, and you can check to see whether or not you know how to do these. OK, so let's have a look at the next one. We're going to start by putting in our x squared and our 20 there. When I multiply those, those two together, I get 20x squared. So that must be my diagonal product. How can I get 20x squared? I can do 1x times 20x. I can do 2x times 10x. Uh, I can do 4x times 5x. Those are the only possibilities I've got there. And I need them to add up to 12x. So there we go. It's going to be 2x and 10x. There's 2x. There's 10x. Look at the numbers first. That must be 2 and 10. Those are x's. x plus 10 times x plus 2. At this point, some of you may be thinking, this is actually a little bit more of a hassle than the way I would normally factor these. And to be true, it is. Um, we're just looking for a number that adds to 12 and multiplies to 20. We got 10 and 2. We could have thrown them straight in there. Where this method really has its advantage is when you have a number in front of the x squared, when you have a leading coefficient on the x squared. But it's good to practice with easier ones first. Um, Let's actually, I'm going to work through C and D with you as well, just because they've got some negatives in them. So we'll talk about that. Um, so again, let's start out with x squared 25. Product is going to be 25x squared. OK, and now notice this time, we need them to add 
to negative 10x. Well, the only way we can have the two numbers add to negative 10x and have a positive product is if they're both negative. So my possibilities here are going to be negative x times negative 25x and negative 5x and negative 5x. Obviously, it's going to be this guy because that one adds to negative 10x. So negative 5x, negative 5x. Notice here things get a bit weird. Um, we could have this as either positive or negative 5. If possible, we want these to be positive. So I'm going to make this one a positive 5 and that one a positive 5. Oh, sorry. I'm wrong. If possible, we want the x's to be positive. And the only way the x's can be positive is if these are negative. Sorry about that. So now we've got x times x is x squared. Negative 5 times negative 5 is 25. Negative 5 times x is negative 5. So that's going to be x minus 5 times x minus 5. And if you want to be really slick, you can just write that as x minus 5 squared, because squared means times itself. OK, let's have a look at the next one. We put our x squared and our negative 12 in there, which means our product is negative 12x squared. And again, we need a product that's negative, and when we add them together, they need to be positive. So the only way we can get a negative product is if they're different signs. But we want the bigger number to be positive, because when they add together, they need to be positive. So I'm either going to have negative x times 12x, or negative 2x times 6x, or negative 3x times 4x. When we add these two together, I get positive x, so I'm going to put those in. Negative 3x and 4x. This guy must be negative 3 to keep the x positive which means that guy's going to be 4, and we've got x and x. So I've got x minus 3 times x plus 4. OK, I'm going to um, pause this, fill in the other two now. So I recommend you pause the video. And when you think you've got them, I'll have the answers for E and F for you. OK, so there are the last two done for you there. Um, notice f is actually difference of squares. Um, ideally, you guys learned last year that if you've got two squares, for example, we've got x squared and 9 squared, and difference means subtract, then it's going to be the square root of x squared is x, the square root of 9 is 3, so you end up with x plus 3, x minus 3. This is the page where it really starts to pay dividends, this new method. It is so much easier than every other way when you have this 2 in front of the x squared. So let's uh, do some, and we'll see how it works out. Here I've got 2x squared, 3 there. That means my product is going to be 6x squared. So my possibilities here are x times 6x. 2x times 3x, those are my only possibilities. And we want those two boxes to add up to 7x, so it must be the top one. I'll put x there, I'll put 6x there. That must be a 3, which means that's a 1. If that's a 1, that's an x. And that must be 2x then. So 2x squared plus 7x plus 3 is the same as 2x plus 1 times x plus 3. Okay, and I'm going to let you try b, because that's an easy one with all positives. So again, uh, you're going to want to pause and try b. I'll just throw the answer up in a second. Okay, so there's b. Um, one thing I should mention is, um, some of you may find this a bit of a waste of time if you can just see that um, 2x times 9x is going to equal 11x. Um, if that's the case, then don't bother drawing this out. 
Um, all I really need from these is this final line, 3x plus 1 times 2x plus 3. Um, but I do highly recommend you use the chart and write the product there, because that's going to help you out a lot. Okay, um, I think you guys should be pretty good at these by now. So I'm just going to throw up the last four for you to check. So again, pause it, try the last four, and when you come back, I'll have them for you to look at. All right, so here's the answers to the last four. Um, notice, sorry about all the smudge marks and stuff, I wrote X's on these couple here by mistake and scratched them out. Um, notice on this one, when I got the 2x times negative 15x, I realized that that multiplied to negative 13x, so I just stopped, because I knew that was what I needed to put in here. And on F, um, using this chart really is not the best way to do this question. Recognizing that it's difference of squares, we know that 3 squared is 9, x squared is x squared, so this is going to be 3x and 4 squared is 16, so that's why it's 3x plus 4, 3x minus 4. All right, uh, that's the end of the lesson. Um, obviously, um, yeah, ask me questions in class if you can. If not, uh, send me an email.